Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Kick, and today we're going to be setting up a mob farm using soul shards. So, I hope you guys are ready. So today we have some work to do, quite a bit of work actually, and uh, that's going to involve us going into our dimension because I kind of uncovered something that is going to be very, very helpful for us in the coming uh, episodes or so. So today we need to kind of get started with just a few things, and that is soul shards. So on the server here, the the uh, end portal and everything has already been discovered. So we already have a waypoint to it, which would be really nice to be able to go there um, without utilizing too many ender pearls, because we all know the process that it takes to get to the end. But you see the soul shard here. I want to utilize this because if we take a look and go to our other dimension, we pop in here. Shouldn't take too long to head into here. You will see that if we go over to this edge, and I noticed this because whenever I opened my chest over here after running this quarry, I looked at my chest and I was going, oh, we have some mossy stone, and that can only mean one thing. And luckily, this, this thing wasn't just a little bit over because it would have consumed our spawner, which wouldn't have been good at all. But if we look down here, we can sort of see, that's right, there is a spawn room down there. So. We're gonna utilize a few tools to be able to get down there, one being a bucket, of course. I still have my smoker on me. <laughs> I was getting more bees earlier. Um, but yeah, we're gonna head down there, we're gonna grab that, but first, I wanna make that soul shard. Uh, definitely, definitely wanna make that soul shard, and uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that. First things first, before we do anything, though, is come to the end and mine up some lovely in stone. Now, this is gonna take a little bit of time, so I'm gonna go ahead and collect a little bit and uh, yeah, I will meet you guys back at the base as soon as I'm done. So in order to get this soul shard, we're gonna need to set up a pattern that looks sort of like this. So we're gonna place down glowstone. On each side, we're gonna have a little bit of netherrack. And then on all the other sides, we're gonna throw in some in stone. And this is exactly the pattern you want because we're gonna whack a diamond on here because it says right here, and you probably need to look this up in the wiki, but it says to obtain by creating a structure in the overworld by using a diamond on the origin block. And of course, this right here is the structure. And so right clicking on this or shift right clicking. Isn't it right clicking? So this was a way, but I guess it's going even further back old school. And uh, to do that, of course, there's another type of multi block that this should work with. Um, and we're going to go ahead and set that one up. That is going to involve a piece of glowstone, all quartz on each side, like that, and obsidian all around. Now, this is another old school, but like these, I'm pretty sure used to be, or is the or the, the, the new version, and this was the old version. But anyways, we right click, and there we go. You can see we got an unbound soul shard, so that is perfect. Now, um, it says on unbound because we haven't killed a mob with the vile sword yet, but we're going to skip the killing of the, uh, the, we're going to skip the vile sword part altogether. We should be able to get at least a tier one shard, which will uh, pretty much work as a normal spawner. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this all removed <laughs> and clear this up. And then we're going to go head down to that spawner and hopefully nab herself something nice. So currently there is a few ways we can get down here. If we place a block in here, this thing is going to come all the way up and try to break the block. So uh, we need to probably break the machine to prevent this from happening. That'd probably be the best thing to do. And it'll also get rid of this frame. Um, but I do need to stand in just the right location. So that way this thing doesn't pop off and go directly down. That's never any fun. Let's see. Where'd he go? There we go. Land it over here. You never know where this guy is going to pop. <laughs> it could always land bad. Um, but we need to stand in sort of a location that I think give, like gets us right to where we need to be. Like I can't tell. Is it right there? It's hard for me to see fully. I think it's right here. Yeah, I think we're good. So I'm going to place the water down. We're going to let that water drain all the way down to the bottom. Should take it a little bit of time. And then we can actually swim our way down. Um, I was also thinking about pillaring which is another method that we could use. Um, of course, it's a little bit more dangerous as we don't have that water net. And you could accidentally step too fast and bam, your, 
<laughs> you're down here and you're hurt. So yeah, and we don't really have any longfall boots or anything made yet, even though longfall boots do exist. Um, believe with the portal mod, I do see the portal guns. Pretty sure longfall boots are a thing. Because I remember seeing them. Yeah, they're right here. Longfall boots. I haven't seen... Oh, wow. That's actually not that bad to make. We might have to make those. Those will prevent fall damage for us. And those just require a little bit, a little bit of obsidian and such. So, yeah. We're just going to pillar our way down here and get to the water. Even though, of course, we can drop from the top. That is another option. Right now, I'm not too concerned. We're going to head off this way. Peek our head out a little bit. Get our soul shard ready. Because whenever we drop down here, it looks like we need probably need to be on this side where the this is at. We don't want anything spawning. So, shift right click on this, I think. Maybe, maybe not. Probably need to get this thing, keep it from spawning. I thought you shift right clicked on this. We'll have to see. See how that goes. So, it seems like I had to kill the zombie at least once, and then I'm able to shift right click, and that gets us to a tier 2. So I killed one zombie, and that got it to a tier 1. I didn't even have to use anything, I just used the, the regular sword, and it actually worked. I thought you had to use a vile sword. But anyways, we have some stuff in this chest. We have some glowing water. That's nice. Harms undead enemies. We have a few things. I will take all of this. Let's go ahead and uh, figure out what to do with... All of this. I, I brought it just in case, but really it's just taking up inventory space because I want to nab everything out of these chests. Ooh, iridium shards. Luck of the sea. That's actually some really nice stuff. These iridium shards are very, very useful. Okay. Wow. Uh, and we also have a mining area here, so there might be some carts hiding out. That's going to be interesting. So I'm going to make my way all the way up. And what we're going to do is whenever I get back to the top, I'm going to uh, go ahead and get this uh, spawner set up so that way we can have a little bit of mob essence and stuff being generated and I'll kind of talk about that here in a little bit and how our automated mob farm is going to actually function. So with the soul shard and everything kind of gathered here, we can kind of throw all of this stuff inside here. Perfect. Leaving our soul shard in a perfect place. And we'll take a look at the soul mod because we're going to need to make a soul cage. And these corrupted ingots are not actually that hard to make. And we need four of them. So we're going to need a bit of vial, which all you do with this is literally smelt some soul sand. And luckily enough, we have some. So I'm going to make 64 of those. And the corrupted essence, we can literally make enough. I think we need 16 of these total. I have tons of these resources. So uh, tons of obsidian that we've gotten from uh, our quarries and such. But yeah, we should not have any issues with that. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there. And that's going to take a little bit of time to smelt up. I might actually split this up. And we can throw some of it in our electric furnace. Since both of those are pretty fast, I'd say the the redstone furnace is probably a bit faster at this point, considering how much RF it uses. Um, but yeah, this corrupted essence and stuff, and then all we need is some iron bars, which that's nothing to make. And then we get us a soul cage. So uh, what we'll do is we'll place the soul shard in the soul cage, and basically it gives us a portable mob spawner. That is really nice. And I don't know if this obeys light level or not. I, can't, I don't remember. But I do know that it is much better than a regular mob spawner. And the spawn rates are way better. So, what we're going to do is grab some cobblestone. We're going to build us a spawner room. I don't know if we have any dark glass or anything like that so we can see into our farm. Um, that's probably going to be the only issue. Because I don't think we have any glass that, like... Uh, blocks out light unfortunately so um we'll go with we'll go with whatever we have i think this uh you know just closing it up will be just fine we might be able to put like a uh, a little window or something in there we'll see we'll see what we can do but for right now we're just worried about getting this vile dust and then we'll worry about getting that spawner set up so with this being set up we can make this just like a normal mob spawner so uh being in my house that should be plenty of room to give this uh all we need to do is count this out so if we put the wall here that's one two three four four spaces is all you need from between the wall and the spawner and then this needs to go up three 
and the spawner is going to go on that top block, basically dropping mobs down, which is perfectly fine. And then one, two, three, four out here. Same for this side, one, two, three, four. So we might, I'm gonna move this back one, basically. And that should, that should work just fine. One, two, three, and then up the top we'll have the spawner. Um, these blocks will just get moved, that's no big deal. And then one, two, three, four, and right here. Because right here is going to be our mob crusher. This is where we're going. What we're going to use to actually grind up the mob, and uh, I'm going to set up the basic frame for this. Of course, this dirt is going to stay just fine. We're not going to have any issues. We won't even have to put water down to make it flow or anything. There's no need because we're going to have our mob grinder set up in a big enough radius that any mob that is dropped in here will immediately be killed, which is exactly what I want. So that should be set up perfect, just perfect. Um, now. This only needs to be, uh, have one block space above the spawner. So one, two, three. That puts us at the spawner height. And then one, that'll put us at the level. And then one more will put us with it, giving it one block of free space. Which that's exactly what I want. Um, and we can kind of go ahead and place the spawner down. It's It has nothing in it. But if I jump here, that'll kind of give us an, a better idea of how you see there is a, a single block space. Um, Cause I believe that it doesn't actually spawn any mobs directly above it. Maybe it's two blocks directly above it. And actually I think it is two blocks above it. So just to be on the safe side so we don't have mobs spawning on the roof, um, I am gonna take it up just one more just to be on the safe side. Cause yeah, that is, yeah, I just wanna be on the safe side. Okay. So I'm gonna get my stuff straight this time, and I'm gonna actually I'm gonna place it right here because I'm a little bit confused. So basically, it'll spawn here. It, uh, the spawn rate will be will say, all right, it can spawn on the floor level. They can spawn here, and then they can also spawn one block above. So what we need is technically our cage to only be this tall, and make sure that this is at a height like it already is then we should be good. I don't need to make it this big. It should not need to be this big. Um, now, our spawning radius where we would need to stand uh, to be near this thing, I think around this area will be just fine. Uh, this should definitely allow them to spawn while we're around. But yeah, this should definitely um, allow mobs to spawn inside. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make the roof this solid right here, and then all these sides are gonna be this material. Going up one, of course this one going up one, and then the walls, I'm going to use this material. And it's just gonna add a little bit more texture all the way around. And so that way we don't end up with that solid brick texture, which just doesn't look that great. So I will be right back once we get this done. So at this point, we should be able to go ahead and make our mob crusher, as you can see here. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some of these materials out that we don't need. And if we take a look here, we have the mob crusher. We're also gonna need to feed this thing some power. So grab a few more of these hardened, which we can easily route the power to. Um, we should have some power directly under here because if I remember correctly, I did, I did put power down here. I just need to dig it out and see exactly where I put power. <laughs> oh, wow, we have a power line directly under it. How convenient is that? Okay. So you can see right here, there's our power lines. Let's go ahead and fill this back up. Of course, once it turns back into grass, I'll be able to till it. So with the mob crusher, we can literally place this guy right here. And this thing is gonna get power and it is already ready to go, but the range is just, it's just not having it. So we need to find a range upgrade that is going to fit this thing. And I think a range six might work. That is gonna require silver. We're gonna see. I'm just taking a shot in the dark and guessing because I really wish these had a thing that actually told you what the range was. Um, Let's open this up because I can't actually tell. Does this fit the whole, whole inside? Did I get this right? Okay, so it goes one out. So technically, Technically, this will work. I think I need to go one smaller, though. 
<laughs> one or two smaller, actually. I think, I mean, that's quite large. Um, we went with a six, maybe go with the four. I gotta think the range on these things are kind of ridiculous. And I really don't want it to go too far out. Let's try this one. Is that more inside? That's still just a little bit too big. Oh man. Let's go one more lower. We'll try the range add on three. Maybe that'll be good enough. Like I said, I just don't I wanna I don't wanna pick up any extra stuff and then all of a sudden have my system jammed up. Okay, so three fits that perfectly. So that works. Okay. So let's get this set back up and just kind of cover this up. Now I do want to go ahead, turn that off, break these torches out because of course we don't want any light in here and I can go ahead and break this because we don't have to worry about mob spawning in or under it. I will go ahead and place this here and that this is our opening and we're going to go ahead and take the soul shard. And I think this has an inventory or something much like an inventory. Okay, so it's not an exactly an inventory, but you, if you right click this on there, that sets that now. So now that should technically spawn zombies once this is closed up and and good. Should work just like a normal zombie spawner. Now unfortunately you're not going to really be able to see it, but you will see um, this tank sort of fill up once these mobs do start spawning. And uh, you'll notice uh, we need to be kind of standing further away from this. about three blocks out. So right here at this point, if we're anywhere outside here, technically that should spawn if it is using the the regular mechanics of a spawner. And eventually we'll see some, uh, some mob drops like that. There we go. And we should start seeing fluid essence build up in here. This is the gold we're after. I mean, this stuff is nice, but the, the essence is definitely what we're after. So we're gonna need a couple, uh, we're gonna need to figure out a way to pipe stuff out. Modular routers might be the best way since we do need to keep this sort of dark. Um, that or we can pull this mob crusher out one because it doesn't, doesn't have to be directly inside the wall. That might actually be better um, now that I think about it. Hmm. So yeah, let's go ahead and break this thing. Nice. And what we can do is we can just we'll just route this, reroute this cable. We'll throw you over here, reroute you. The mob crusher, and what we'll do is we'll just throw the uh, upgrade in here. Don't we have a four? Yeah, we'll put the four range upgrade in there, and that will do the trick. That will also continue to collect, and now we have sides that we can start tanking this stuff on. So yes, a tank is going to be something we need to use for the fluid essence, and I'm, I might use an inner tank, but I think I'm gonna use another tank, uh, the portable tank, before I start pushing that out of there to give us even more storage. So we'll start with the basic portable tank, but if you use your kits to upgrade this thing, I mean, it gets pretty ridiculous on the size that it, it can go up to. So we have a bronze gear, we'll just get the base kit to make it hardened. And then I think I have enough for this. Yes, silver gear. And then this guy will upgrade even more. And this tank will hold quite a lot. Now this fluid is hot, so you will need a hardened fluid duct. And you're also gonna need a servo. Not a very fast servo. Your basic servo will work just fine. And uh, I'm really after that fluid and everything else we can put in a chest or we can, technically since it's only doing one particular mob, and that's all we have to worry about, we should be just fine with uh, using barrels to store these things. Um, and that should last us quite a while. So let's take that fluid duct, and we need to also set this up on the inside. Um, we have categories for each thing. The right side, if I remember correctly, the faces are a little bit weird. I need to, I need to know which side is the front. I think that is technically considered the front. So if we look at it this way, I think that's how that works. <laughs> We're gonna find out. Let's go ahead and we'll disable everything on this side. And on this side, we'll leave the left. The only way to get the essence out. 
and we'll just hook up a fluid duct and it connected. So that's good news. Place that there and we'll place that servo down. Turn it on. And yes, that worked. Okay. So that means the, uh, the left side is that proper side. So this would be the right side we need to enable. And that's pretty much it for setting up automation for our little mob farm. Now, like I said, I'm going to, at this point, probably make a diamond chest. I think a diamond chest will be just fine. Let's take a look. What do we have for chests? We have a diamond chest, so that's gonna be perfect. And we have a couple of item ducks. Technically, we only need one for right now. Oh, and we need a servo. Bam, man, we are doing, we are, man, we are flying through this pack. I feel like we are really, really flying through this. All right, so we can place a chest here and a servo just like on the other side. This one is gonna be for items. And yeah, we should start seeing our items out of here start getting pulled out. And uh, this guy is ready to go and it is generating a little bit of this essence, which is gonna be perfect. Now, putting those kits on there, that's gonna up that from what was originally uh, 20 millibuckets to 80. And this will upgrade it to 180 millibuckets that you can store in this thing. Yeah, it goes up quite a bit and quite, quite fast. So these tanks are actually really, really nice. But anyways, guys, that is our mob farm. And then it also gets a zombie brain. So yeah, rotten flesh can actually be utilized and turned into several different things. And you can see here with the zombie fragments and things like that, uh, we can actually turn this into a few different things later on down the road. Look at that rail strat or rail craft to get this blood stained block or whatever. Um, zombie separate from Twilight Forest. This is uh, a little bit different. Um, we do have Twilight Forest in here. It's just that I probably won't be going to the Twilight Forest. I've done it in the past, and yeah, it just doesn't really work with shaders, and I just don't feel like uh, <laughs> I don't feel like messing with the Twilight Forest in this this playthrough. But anyways. Uh, we're gonna be going. We're gonna go ahead and get this done. We'll let that build up some essence. And uh, next few episodes or so, guys, we are really gonna be improving some things. We're gonna be heading to the Nether. And once we get to the Nether, we need to search for gas tears because what we're gonna be doing next is we're gonna be using that fluid, that essence, to spawn in our own mobs and kind of control what exactly the mob drops we we are getting. And guys. Reliquary is a very powerful mod, and I can't wait, I can't wait to kind of maximize our production with Reliquary. So, I will see you guys in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed today's. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see this video, guys, a huge thumbs up. I will see you guys in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.